My name is Richard Wesley, and it is my privilege to be the pastor here at St. Bethlehem United Methodist Church. And I am excited that you are along with us for today's journey. Now, today is the fifth Sunday in Lent. I, I hope you're experiencing a holy and a deep and meaningful Lenten journey. Being the fifth Sunday in Lent, that means next Sunday is Palm or what we call Passion Sunday. Then we enter Holy Week. And then, of course, the Sunday after that is Resurrection Sunday we call Easter. I'm glad you're with us today. Today, we are looking at the love of Jesus. lesson today is found in the Gospel of John. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, 
will draw, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The words of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. While Robert was reading that passage, did you notice what appears to be Jesus' rudeness? Think about what he just read. Two Greeks, that would be Gentiles, want to talk to Jesus. So they find Philip, one of the inner circle of Jesus' followers, and they ask Philip if they could see Jesus. Well, Philip doesn't know what to do. Jesus is a Jew, and his followers are all Jews at this point. And you see, in Jesus' day, there's this huge racial prejudice between Jews and Gentiles. Our Gospels have a lot to say about this tension between the Jewish people and the Gentile folks. Anyway, Philip doesn't take them to Jesus. Instead, he leaves them and goes and finds Andrew. He tells Andrew, there are two Gentiles over here that want to see Jesus. I mean, what on earth do Gentiles want with Jesus? What should we do? Andrew probably says, well, we need to tell Jesus, and off they go to find Jesus. Okay, you see the picture? Two Gentiles tell Jewish Philip they want to see Jewish Jesus. Philip goes and tells Jewish Andrew, and Andrew and Philip go and tell Jesus. There are two Gentiles wanting to see you, Jesus. And what Jesus does confuses me. Now, I don't have many expectations about what Jesus might do at this point. He could accept their desire to speak with them and go and talk to them. He could set an appointment to see them at a later time if he can't get to them right then. Or he could send word back and say, no, I'm not talking to you today. I don't have a lot of expectations, but I don't expect Jesus to just ignore them. So what does Jesus do? Andrew and Philip inform Jesus that two Gentiles want to speak to him. Then Jesus turns and begins teaching a discourse on his pending death and resurrection. Really? Jesus? I mean, really? In a racially charged culture, two Gentiles want to talk to you, a Jew, and you just ignore them? I, I spent days wrestling with this one. While I was trying to make sense of all of this, I was reminded of a song I heard several years ago. Maybe you've heard the song. The title of the song is What Love Really Means by J.J. Heller. Now, if you haven't heard that song, I suggest that you Google it or go to YouTube and find it. Because as I listened to the words, I had my answer to my confusion over what Jesus did in this situation. Jesus hadn't really just ignored them. In fact, Jesus answered the question of their deepest need. Listen to some of the words from this song. He cries in the corner where nobody sees. 
He's the kid with the story that no one would believe. He prays every night, Dear God, won't you please, could you send someone here who will love me? Who will love me for me? Not for what I have done or what I will become. Who will love me for me? Because nobody has shown me what love, what love really means. Jesus answered them, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, <coughs> it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. The death and resurrection of Jesus bear much fruit. And you are that fruit. Jesus says, whoever serves me must follow me. You are now the follower, the one who serves Jesus. And to serve Jesus is to love those Jesus loves. Sir, we would see Jesus. We have questions. And what was the answer that Jesus gave them? It is for you that I came into this life, into this world. I give myself as an offering for all humanity, for all creation. I will love you for you, not for what you have done or what you will become. I will love you for you. I will give you the love, the love that you never knew. And this is who Jesus calls us to be for each other. Let us pray. O covenant God, you have shown your faithfulness to all generations by preserving the works of your mercy. You delivered your chosen people from bondage and made with them a promise to be their God. Now make a new covenant with us. You make a new covenant with us, your chosen in Christ Jesus. Therefore, we raise your holy name for all the world to worship. Your promise of eternal life is delivered in the teaching of Jesus. He promised to draw us all to himself when he returned to you after the resurrection and to give us that new life but we love too much our lives here on earth. We know our transgressions and our sins are ever before us. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and remember our sins no more. You have written your new covenant in our hearts and have called us to exhort the world to know you, the Lord. By the power of your Holy Spirit, fill us with zeal for your good news, that your voice may be heard in all the earth. There are many who suffer with weakness of the flesh, the mind, and the soul. By your merciful power, give them the courage and strength to bear their burdens, so they may glorify your name. Receive our prayers as we offer them in union with the supplications of our great High Priest, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Who will love me for me, not for what I have done or what I will become? Who will love me for me? Because nobody has shown me what love, what love really means. Until Jesus comes along. And Jesus shows us what love really is. Jesus shows us how to love one another. Go into the world this week knowing you are loved and take that love and share it with others. We'll see you next week.